Good Hello morning, again. everybody. We're here for 340 players over the last weekend. Pretty solid as far as tournament weekends go. Yeah, jumping back up to more like what we've seen. Um, With a couple kinda... big standout trends. Yeah, it seems like it's, it's for anyone that's been tracking, following along, uh, the, the teams that are kind of like, seem like the strongest right now, Wormblade, Blooded, and Brood Brothers. Definitely the wider teams that can mix up both ranges have been finding way more success. Outside of just the raw win, win weight uh, here today, Hunter Clade did go 6-0, so Ryan Slater of Turning Point Tactics did go 6-0 at the Sheffield GT, and he has punched his ticket to Atlanta on Hunter Clade, a team that I have thought probably is good, but a lot of the older experienced players had their fun with it in the first year. And now everyone else has to decide if they want to try it or not. It's a team that has a lot of skill gap things because using GA2 at the right time is important and being able to set it up over multiple turns is important. And you are still kind of fragile, but less fragile than some of these other seven wound teams. Yeah, and they've got a lot of like options there. Um, and you really got to know like when to use each option. So they are a really strong team, but they are a tough one to to get right to go six and oh with i think they're also unfortunately one of those teams that feels a little flat to play because all of their rules are very i just do this thing but i just do it better yeah there's no like flavor it's just like ah we've programmed ourselves to be better in melee so we just hit harder it's like eh, it's fine compared to something like blooded where you're like passing out tokens you're praying to the gods and stabbing someone like it just it just feels a little different uh, friend of the yeah. podcast, J JD, who was on here to talk about Worm... Uh, uh, was it the Termination Box? Uh, he's been on he, at least twice. He's been on a couple like. times. Yeah, he's been on twice. So JD like lost in the finals against Dylan G, a Hearthkin player. So let us know if you guys want to hear some Hearthkin Salvagers info. Because Dylan has mentioned that he'd be down to come on the podcast at some point. Dylan went 4-0 at the at like this Tennessee tournament that keeps getting a golden ticket. They've had eight players both years. This year they had nine. <laughs> so they did get a 4 0, and there will be at least one other Hearthkin Salvagers player at the World Championships if he takes the team that he qualified with. <clears throat> Snazzy. Yeah, as far as other interesting results, there were, I think, four or five tournaments that gave out golden tickets this weekend. In. Argentina, Argentina, Ratman, friend of the podcast, he went six or he went four oh two and got first place at qualifiers for Atlanta 2024 with Blooded. So a good weekend for Blooded. Part of the big win rate spike is Ratman here. Amongst other people, there were eleven players and two of them, two others went three oh. So for all the people saying that Blooded were undeservedly nerfed, I still have of the mindset that they're probably good enough. They just sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad because they are still a seven wound team with a couple frailties. Yeah, yeah, and like the the nerf is like hardly anything because I mean it seems like most of the time I've seen people being playing blooded like they don't often bring the big guy. Yeah, I think the big guy is good when he's good, and in those matchups where he's really, really good against the elites or the guys with the other big guys, you probably can find one spot to hide him on a piece of heavy while everyone else does the other stuff. It is yeah. a nerf, but Blooded were one of the teams a couple weeks ago when we were doing these week-to-week -week stat shows where Blooded were doing very well. Yeah. And this week they did pretty good, you know? 3% of the meta with 60% and 3 players fully undefeated out of the 11. It's pretty good. Uh, another interesting result, Corsair Voidscard were in contention for a tournament win. It was uh, Nate A out in Alberta, Canada. He lost to Brood Brothers. So Brood Brothers had four, four players, I think. Or two players that yeah. went fully undefeated this weekend. Hunter Clay had one, Hearthkin Salvagers... Uh, had one four zero and then one four one one at the Sheffield GT where he got, I think fourth. So does seem like the wider teams are back on the menu. Elites 
continue to struggle. Warp Coven did have a 4-0 going into the Sheffield GT, and then they lost their last two rounds. So it does seem like, you know, they've got their legs, but they're not going to win the top end of the matchups just because it is really hard right now in the current meta for six to nine activations to beat the 10 to 12 activations. Yeah, and um, when it comes to the popular picks, Nemesis Claw is back on top. Um, super, super yeah. popular. Kill Team Nightmare all the way at the tippity top with 170 games. <laughs> Almost Commando's making up like... popular up there too. Yeah. Yeah, between Nemesis Claw and Mandrakes, we have almost 160 <laughs> players out of the entire po- set of 340, which is kind of cra- kind of wild. Yeah. That's a lot. Um, Scout Squad's still pretty popular, but uh, they, they came back down to earth a little bit here. Uh, it's looking like, what is that, like a 40% win rate? Yeah, just around 40. Yep, just around 40. No one actually in tournament winning contention, so a lot of people just getting, you know, I think we talked about this, they're a very direct team, so if you get outskilled early on and you lose a couple dudes, you cannot stat check your way through a deficit early. You have to maintain a pretty tight tight margin until your opponent flank collapses. Yeah. Um, other people that did pretty well, Hearthkin Salvagers had a pretty good weekend. Up at the 55% intercession actually also had a reasonably high win rate this weekend. Uh, actually with one 3-0, but oh, at the You'll Die Trying RTT that friend of the podcast uh, friend of the podcast did. Oh man, let's see. You'll die. Yeah, the you'll die. <laughs> so um, I, I think it's amazing to players. note that mm-hmm. I was going to say the, I've been looking at the higher attack. They jumped way up in popularity and went even further down in win percentage. Yeah, I think that nerf definitely cut the legs out from under players just trying to strong arm their ways into playing them. In Argentina, they went 3-2-1. I think they might have dropped the last round. So they were in contention for a while. So they were uh, win, win, tie, win, and then they lost, and then I think they dropped. So I think higher tech players probably can still adapt to the meta, but it probably is much, much harder to get the W. Uh, In that one particular situation that you just called out what was the loss against mm-hmm. what faction oh let's see if i can see it pairings oh, oh pairings that still are up let me see fire tech franco oh and franco alvarez i've seen him a bunch uh he lost intercession, interestingly enough. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Thomas C. He was second place at the qualifiers for Atlanta in Argentina with a 4 2 record. With intercession? With intercession. Spicy. Yeah. So, um, also, you know, maybe amazingly... intercession still can do some of the slapping. You know, like, yeah, I'm still right like now here for intercession. I think right now in the area where the teams that are good are very squishy teams, having a good elite player who knows to just run at your opponent and give up the points and not play the 3 3 split might actually still have some room to see some play. Or, get, like, because stat check teams are where it's at right now. Like, the counterplay to finesse, high finesse wide teams is stat checking your opponent. It's right, because if they violence. can't chew through your wounds fast enough, your opponent will lose because they just run out of operatives quickly enough. Blooded and Brood Brothers do have tools in that they both also have a big guy to counter stat check. So it's not like it's a guaranteed win, but I would expect that Compendium Demons this weekend in Seattle might have a reasonable shot if this is what the meta is going to look like. So, yeah. We'll see if uh, one of our Patreon subscribers, Matt, he goes to, he's going to Seattle this weekend. I'm going to see him there. And uh, who knows? Maybe he'll, maybe he'll be able to break the meta <laughs> with a little bit of a stat check. Hopefully. Good luck, Matt. Any other big um, questions for this week? I think this one's a pretty interesting one, all told. Uh, Exaction Squad, actually, interestingly enough, also pushing back up to the 50% win rate. Even though they were not in 
striking contention. It's just interesting to see that they <laughs> have climbed back up to uh, 50-50 after basically nothing changing except for the meta changing. So now that there are more teams that the shotguns are good against, it looks like they have found a small niche again. Yeah, or like good players giving another swing at them is always potentially a factor. Yeah, Void Dancers also, hilariously enough, still at close to a 50-50 win, right? <laughs> Even though no one really expects that they will win a big tournament, but they're still out here. Yeah, do they have any like really good records that you can see? No, there was a there was one in striking contention for a three zero, and there was one two one one, but they lost a third round, so not too much. The one where they were two and zero going into the last round was a six player tournament, so truly it means almost nothing as far as actual data goes. So, like yeah. you know, the void dancers are playable, but they're they remain a high skill cap team with you know not too much going on. Hurricane Jaeger did actually have a four a three zero one tournament. So they did yeah. well. Shane, friend of the pod, command point, went up to Chimera Gaming, tried to get their golden ticket just for funsies, and lost the fourth round to Brood Brothers. Which what I suppose is not really too much of a surprise. He was playing Hernkin, so he was playing. So Hernkin, he did pretty yeah. well as far as as far as things go. Actually, Hernkin had two only one loss results the, the weekend. One in the Argentina qualifier and one in Canada. And those were both six round, five round tournaments. So it does seem like Hearn Ken Jaeger definitely landed in basically the sweet spot for a team where they are good enough and not broken and feel unique. So I think they kind of hit it out of the park with them. Brood Brothers feel a little bit, yeah. you know, Brood Brothers are Brood Brothers. They're obviously powerful. They require you to play a little differently. They're a shooting team. They can do a little bit of everything. So they're obviously good. But it's nice to see that Hearn Ken Jaeger, I think, are right in the money where you want them to be. Yeah. yeah, pretty fun weekend. Uh, Cascan still remain poop. Uh, Inquisition agents, after soaring to the top of the meta last week, came crashing back down as it generally goes with that team. Because if you are not perfect, you're not good. Cas cult, uh, they are they yeah. exist well, again finally. Yeah, they had three players play them. One of them went to a four round tournament and was in striking condition, striking range. Played in Poland. And lost to. Let's see. Let's see if I can see. Oh, it is. Marek. Uh, lost to Hernkin Jaeger by one point. So they're still in there, still in the mix. Don't sleep on the Chaos Cult. And I guess that kind of makes sense. I would expect that Chaos Cult would also be a pretty solid line breaker f against the wider 10-man teams or 10-12-man teams because one torment at the wrong spot can definitely kill two seven-wound dudes and then explode and basically cripple another guy. Yeah. So yeah, pretty fun weekend. Cool to see. Uh, Sheffield GT, 44 players, so pretty big one. And I, let's, let's, you know, we might as well take a look at Ryan's win path if we can see it. Because I'm kind of curious. Oh, it might be private already, then. Oh, no, it's not. All right, Ryan. Yes. All right, first win, Star Striders. Second win, Novitiates. All teams that you out activate and outgun. Hunter Clade, Hernkin Jaeger, wide enough where they don't get the activation advantage. Melee is good enough where you can actually kill a Jaeger. Because you can chip them down with shooting and then you can go run them down. Higher tech circle, 21 to 10, pretty much a shellacking. Probably not that surprising, oh, honestly. Uh, Beating the Warp Coven player who was in striking contention, also not overly surprising. Power Swords are not great against 12 wound operatives. So none of the rubrics are good. Zangors also cannot hang against Power Swords or 4-6 Rending Claws, or even 4-5 balanced with an extra reroll. So it's effectively 6 dice on 3s looking for a crit, and that breaks your Zangor. So the 4-5 breakpoint with a lot of rerolls probably is quite good against Zangors. 
Actually, no, it's seven dice because you get balance from your ploy. You have five attacks and you have balance from your weapon. And then he beat Hearth and Salvagers in the finals. So never had to play Brood Brothers, which does put a little asterisk on maybe the overall win rate. But uh, the old ones player, Nick Collins, did lose in the third round. So basically took him out of contention. Never had to play against Felgor. But overall, not too surprising that Hunter Clay can still hang. They are a good team with a high skill cap. So I'm glad to see them still getting some representation. And it's funny to see Ryan finally give up on Exaction Squad. Because I know I've been, uh, I think on a couple of these, I've probably mentioned that like, oh yeah, he's still out there trying to make Exaction Squad work. I think right now might be the best meta for Exaction Squad. But even Ryan has decided it's time to hang it up and go get a ticket with a team that can actually hang. Yeah. Starting to, uh, you know, time's time's ticking. Clock's ticking on those golden tickets. Yeah, we're getting down to the wire. So thanks for uh, hanging out with the stat show, everybody. It was fun. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy the new visualization to try to give everybody the obvious, obvious problems and the less obvious problems. Yep. Stay tuned. See you next week. <laughs>